Okay, so uh, YouTube find it befitting today to give me a, a strike, strike on one of my video. You know, and um, you know, it's funny because I was looking for an appropriate picture to demonstrate the type of people that would want to strike the video. You know who they are, the sisterhood. I could just hear them now. I could just hear their prayer now. Oh, Beelzebub, we come to you today. Oh, Bob, we come to you today to pray and beseech you. We are your servant. You know, there are a bunch of devil worshippers. Most of those bitches are a bunch of witchcraft workers. Sold their soul to the devil. Behelzebub, we come to you to pray. We beg you, Behelzebub, to silence all those nigger men on YouTube. Because they're telling the truth and fucking up our game. Behelzebub. Please hear our prayer and stop those nigger men on YouTube from telling the truth. Behelzebub, we love you. Now will the sisterhood of swirlers join in and chant, Hail Bob, Hail Bob, Hail Behelzebub, we love you. You know, right now as I speak, Right now, as I'm talking, making this video, the devil is having a meeting with God. And he's telling God that this job that he signed up for is too big for him. It's like, I can't handle this shit no more. You know, and I don't want them in my hell. I don't want these bitches in my hell. Send them somewhere else. Because hell is full, and it definitely... I don't want them around me. So even the devil don't want you motherfuckers. That's how satanic you all are. You know? You're so satanic you all are. You all don't even want, you're not even wanted in hell. Your motherfuckers are going to be cast into oblivion because of all your evil. Oh, you think it's a joke, huh? You're going to be cast into oblivion your DNA will be written over, and your program will be deleted. It will be as if you never existed. You will be purged from the cosmic stream of life. You know how I know this? You know how I know that someone can lose their soul? I'll tell you a little story. Years ago, I had a, I had a very good friend. And uh, he was a white guy. You know, we used to hang out. To play golf, we used to play pool, we used to do a lot of stuff, a lot of us together. But this guy w went to a depression because he had lost his father. Now the thing about it was, while when he was a kid, and I could see why he would be depressed, you know, you lose your parents. Because when he was a kid, he lost his mother at eight years of age. He came in one day from school and found his mother in the bathtub. She had committed suicide. So I know that must have been a traumatic experience. But to top things off, he lost his father. When he lost his father, he was going through a heavy depression. So I was just telling him, man, come on, you know, you get over it. And, but we just couldn't pull him out of it. We just couldn't pull, it seemed like it was going down and down. You know, guys started losing a lot of weight. That's heavy depression. So I said, man, go to the church. And, you know, it's like, I go to church, they're not, they're just not telling me anything. You know, it's just, the church is not doing anything for me. I say, you talk to the preacher, the, 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 the uh, pastor, no, I talk to the pastors. That's, just wasn't happening. So finally, I said, look, I know this African priest, this brother is an African priest. So I said, Let, let's, let's go and see what he can do for you. So, you know, I took him to the African priest. And the thing about the African religion, the, the priests are better trained than even the preachers here. And stop calling them pagan worshippers. They're not. These guys are sometimes more, in, in a lot more cases, more righteous than a lot of you Christians. You know, they stick to their belief system. 
The only thing I never like about the African tradition is the sacrifice. I don't see why you have to kill animals to talk to God. I mean, say if you're a God, why do you need something to die just so you can respond? So that never made sense to me. So I always kind of keep my distance because my background is Christian, you know? So, and it, you know, this whole, this whole sacrifice and all this stuff, this shit started back in Egypt. You know, I, I, Aknakan was the one, Aknakan, I think, was the one who tried to put a stop to it because he was the one that came up with the old principle of concept of one God. And the priests them didn't like him. And the reason why I didn't like him because he was cutting into their money. Because when you sacrifice an animal, uh, that was a form of uh, exchange. That was a, a monetary exchange back then. You know, so if you sacrifice an animal, you get the best part of the animal. All right. Uh, so animals were, were a form of currency. So I could see why the priests were pissed off at him. And it got so bad with him, he, went in, he even went further into the desert to build a city to get away from these uh, traitor priests. But what happened was, I think, and, and no, and finally, it got so bad when they tried to erase him from history. That's why you don't know much about Akhenaten, because he's the one that came up with the concept of one God. So this whole Christian thing didn't start in Israel, it started in Egypt. Christianity is more older than you even can even, than we can even conceive, all right? There's a lot more history there, but I'm not going to del delve into that right now because I'm digressing too far. Now, so, I took him to the priest. And the priest, after he, he did an elaborate divination, you know, elaborate reading. And then after the reading, the priest looked up and he pulled me to the side. And he said, look, I really can't do anything for this guy. I said, what do you mean you can't do anything for this guy, Mr. Priestman? All right. He's like, well, uh, I can't do anything for him because he don't have a soul. I said, what? How can you not have a soul? He said, there are human beings on the planet and the earth who just don't have souls and you know, the way my practice is, you got to have a soul before I can intercede and talk to God for you. Your soul is a connection to God, and he doesn't have one, so I can't do anything for him. So I was like, well, why don't you, why, can he get a soul? Can this guy get a soul? He said, well, it's been difficult, you know, uh, maybe you can find someone who give him a soul. I don't know, I'm, it's out of my hand. And he was trying to kind of backpedal, you know, he was trying to push us through the door. I said, hold it, Mr. Priest, man. You, you, you can't just like leave us hanging like you tell me the guy don't have a soul and you must know there's got to be something that can be done. He said, well, he can get somebody. Maybe if, I said, can we steal a soul? <laughs> I'm just joking. He said, I oh, can't steal a soul. People have to willingly give it up. I said, oh, so he could buy a soul. He said, yeah, 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 yeah he buy a soul, but they'd have to willingly give it up. I said, well, um, who could we get a soul from? He said, well, I don't know. I said, maybe one of those bums in the street. Maybe, maybe they get... He said, no, no, no. Bums are the worst person. The... You, you'll never be able to get a soul from them. That's why they're bums in the first place. They don't even, they don't compromise. And if you look at the bum in the street, you say, if you really look at them, they, some of them even have a glow around them. They are some of the most righteous people out there. You're not going to be able to bribe them for nothing regarding soul or nothing. I said, wow, that's kind of deep. I was like, that's kind of deep. Man, this is kind of crazy. So he said, I said, well, who? He said, politician? He said, a politician, really, they're on the middle ground because you can't say, they, whatever they do, they don't really lose their soul because that's why you vote. You give, them, um, you give them permission to do things in your name. So their hands are clean. That's what's so nefarious about them. So politicians are the slickest people out there. You're not going to get that from them. I said, oh. I said, what other group of people that could I check into? And he said, well, you'll just have to, you'll just have to look at what's, well, look, check your demographics out. Check out your demographics and you will be able to tell the people who will, you know, will, will give up things freely and easily. So I was like, man, I don't want to be a part of this. You know, um, good. 
So I told my friend, I said, man, I said, man, you're not going to believe this, but the priest said you don't have a soul and you need one for him to do any kind of work for you. In order for him to do anything, you have to, you're going to need a soul. You know, that shit's so weird just telling someone that you're going to need a soul before you can, <laughs> you can get a priest to do any kind of work for you. Oh, that's weird as shit. So we were joking. I didn't even look. We were laughing. He's like, I said, well, do you know where you can get a soul? He said, I pretty much have an idea. I said, don't tell me about it. I don't want to know. <laughs> you get I didn't see him for years. We kind of part ways. I didn't see him for years. But next time I saw him, about six or seven years later, he was glowing. I said, you got your soul, didn't you? He's like, yeah, I'm good now, man. <laughs> You disgusting daughters of Babylon. You don't know what's in store for you. You think striking a video is going to help you? You think you're going to shut us up? You can't shut up, black man. We already know the voices is too loud. The, there's too much information out there about you all now. So you can go and make your prior to Beelzebub because we know most of you are a bunch of witches anyway. But your witchcraft is not working anymore. Witchcraft is not working anymore. Because time has changed. Don't you see what's happening on the planet? The amount of rays and energies that's been released here. Life is changing. It's changing at the subatomic level. And a lot of you are going to be wiped out of the genetic pool. Brothers are running for the hills because they know instinctively, instinctively what's happening to you all. And they don't want to participate. They don't want to be a part of it. And some of us are trying to warn you. But with your arrogance... Your Jezebel mindset. You think you know everything? Well, we're just going to leave you, sit back, and see what happens. You see, I can tell, you can tell when they don't have a soul, when they're losing it. You know, you can tell when shit's gone bad for them because they start losing that human feeling. That's your first sign right there. You get up one day and shit don't feel right. You say, like, What's wrong with you? I just don't know. I just don't know what I'm feeling. I don't so know how I'm feeling. I don't so know what's going on. You start feeling out of place as if you no longer belong here. You start losing that human touch. You start losing that rhythm, the rhythm of life. And then you check your life, you realize you've been living a bastardly animal existence. And you're losing that, the light and the only connection you have to God. And that's why you all give yourself all these different titles now. Independent women, queens and goddesses. Because you all have sold your soul to vanity. And you think you can come to, you can think you can come up and shut up, brother. You can't shut us up. You can't shut us up. You'll never be able to shut us up. It's too late. Too late in the game. You all have been lying for so long that you all don't even know what the truth is anymore. You'd need like a deep cleansing, you need disinfectant. You, need, you would need cleansing and a blood transfusion to cleanse you from all your deception and all your lies. Or you could just repent. Simple. But you'll never repent. You'll never repent of your sins. People don't ever repent of their sins until it's too late. And you know what? All you have to do to repent is just come to the conclusion one day that, you know, these things that I'm doing is wrong. It's wrong and I'm going to stop. And I need God to grant me mercy and forgiveness for all my sins. But you'll never do that because you're too arrogant. So continue on your path that you're on. Continue. We're just going to sit back and see where you end up. And as for you, YouTube, we know where you're coming from. You're coming from that whole New World Order 
uh, takeover. That's what you all are. You're all about this whole New World Order agenda. So for anyone to speak the truth is an affront to your global agenda. You see, y'all don't want us to tell the truth. Y'all just want us to stick our head up our ass and shit in our minds. That's what y'all want. But we're not going to do that. So YouTube, you and your New World Order and your New World Agenda, y'all can go fuck yourselves.